Here we go. Uh, this is uh, Unit 9, Assignment 7. It's pretest for the Unit 9 test. And um, there was just kind of a bunch of stuff up front right here. It does say Unit 8 and Unit 9. So I just do a little Unit 8 review on there. Um, not that I'm not, this test isn't going to be on unit eight specifically, but uh, you know, some of the things we started talking about in unit eight, we're definitely using right now in unit nine. So, um, and based off your guys' questions, it didn't look like many people had questions about this stuff. So I'm, I'm going to skip that, but you could look at the work online if you want. So we could skip down to, uh, the new material specifically first, which starts at problem nine. And we came up with a new, way of estimating error but specifically for alternating series and the idea just to kind of illustrate it again because it should make sense is that when you're looking at the partial sums of a series you know say the first say this line is what it's going to converge to the first partial sums here and the error is the difference between it and what it should converge to. Now the next partial sum goes over here and the next term should be smaller than the previous term. So it's going to go past this one, but a little less than before. And its error is now going to be right there, which is smaller. And then it's going to keep going on and on and on. So each next uh, partial sum has less error. And the error <clears throat> the error of this right here is definitely less than the next chunk. The next term is definitely going to be more than that error. And so it's kind of the simple idea that the error is always going to be less than uh, the next term in an alternating series. So it's kind of an easy one. Uh, to execute, um, it's kind of a simple idea. Lagrange error bound was definitely much more complicated of an idea that we derived in class with many pages of complicated calculus, um, and to pull it off was a bit more work. But um, it says find uh, bound on the error for natural log of two using alternating series error bound, and so this is just you know this is just the the series for natural log. And um, the next term would be plus one fifth. And so, you know, this is n equals zero, n equals one, n equals two, n equals three. It's four terms. Um, but the error is going to be less than the next term. So that's it. So if, if we're, you know, if we're going with n equals four, then we're looking for the n equals five term uh, to be, again, this is just an up, upper bound. Um, our error is for sure less than that. And that's as good as we're going there. Okay, so that's uh, alternating series error bound. So if I gave you guys one of those um, on your test, you would know what to do. Um, so then, but most of the test is going to be really two kinds of problems. There's going to be uh, number series, which problems 10 through 16 are all number series. They don't have any X's. They have N's, which don't count for variables. Um, but if you write them out, it's just going to be purely numbers. And then the other half of the test is going to be uh, power series that have X values. So um, here's just another kind of list uh, sort of summary of the different tests that we've learned, geometric series uh, we can use, ratio test, uh, nth term test, P series test, alternating series test, integral test, comparison test is kind of a last resort. Um, but we have all these different tests. Some of them work on a wide variety of series. Some of them are for very specific series, like P series only works on a P series, geometric series only works on geometric series. Alternating series only works on an alternating series. So um, let's do some of these uh, that you guys had questions on. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> um, do these series convert? Now, number series, it's, it's black or white. It either converges or it diverges. It's one or the other. Power series, 
usually converge for certain values of X and diverge for other values of X. They can be extreme sometimes, but usually we're finding an interval of convergence. Um, now, I would, at least in my head, be doing nth term test. Now, I'm not going to write this down maybe every time, but nth term test. If it works, you got to write the name down. So on your test, you need to write the name down for this, the test that you're going to use. And you need to show the details of the work well. Um, so nth term test, limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over, and I'd probably rewrite this as n to the 5 halves. That's going to be helpful for other tests also. It goes to 0, which is good, but that's inconclusive. So usually I'm not going to write that. I'm going to test it in my head because if it goes to something other than 0, that means it diverges and you're done. It's fast. You don't want to do more work than that. So at least in my head, I'm trying that. After that, well, either after it or even before it, you might realize right away, hey, that's a P series. That's going to be your fastest way of doing this problem. And you need to write the name of the test. That's going to be part of what you need to do to get full credit. And you need to show me how it works. P series test says, okay, well, the P value is five halves. It's the, it's the, it's the exponent on the N value in the denominator. So even though you think of that as a negative exponent, the thing is positive. If it's greater than one, it converges. If it's less than or equal to one, it diverges. And that's it. You're done. That's the work. I need to see you write P. I need to show you compare it to one. If you don't write that, I'm not going to know if you really know the actual uh, reason it converged. Now we could try some others. Um, you know, we could try ratio test. And this is just practice. On your test, just do one test. But you only have to do one test. You try and do the one that works as quick and easily as possible. If you try one and it doesn't work, that's fine. You don't need to erase it. Just write inconclusive and try another one. And sometimes that might happen. So ratio test is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus 1 term. So this going to be 1 over n plus 1 to the 5 halves times n to the 5 halves over 1 divided by the nth term. We could simplify this a little bit um, and write it as n over n plus 1 to the 5 halves. Um, when we apply the limit, we get infinity over infinity, but the dominant terms, the largest growing terms are of the same size, and it goes to 1, which is inconclusive. So, I mean, you could just write that if that's what you get. Um, so that didn't get us anywhere. Um, now, uh, we can't do geometric. We can't do alternating. You could do integral tests. That might be the next one to try. An integral test is going to work on any P-series because that's how we came up with the P-series criteria was we use the integral test. So the in integral test is, well, as long as this is a positive series, at least at, for some point on, and decreasing, going to zero, which is true, and continuous, no discontinuities at least between your limits, because this does have a vertical asymptote when x equals zero. What we do is we say, let's create an integral and put x in. So we're going to create an improper integral and integrate. So this is x to the negative 5 halves, which you could just think in your head, or you could try it out, uh, write it out like that. Um, and we increase it by 1 and divide by the new exponent, and then plug in the limits. Now, I might rewrite this as negative 2 over 3x to 3 halves. Uh, you know, I think that's easier to think about. And we get, we get uh, 0 minus negative 2 over 3 times 1 to the 3 halves. And so we get 2 thirds, which converges. Okay. Now, what that means is that this improper integral converges. This is the, the value of that integral. And the integral test says, well, if that one converges in our series that has the same uh, function for the nth term, will also converge. So it's not going to converge to 2 thirds. Now, what I'm going to ask you on your test is uh, if it's a geometric series, 
I also want to know what it converges to. That's the only one I've been asking you guys to find the sum of the series, which was A over 1 minus R. I'm not going to tell you which ones are geometric series, so that's going to be part of the, the challenge is you got to you need to recognize the geometric series. Um, let's see, number 11, you know, you could think in term test in your head, it's going to zero, that's good. Um, it's not an alternate series, it's not a P series, it's not a geometric series. You could try uh, the ratio test, ratio test, uh, limit, now, when you do ratio tests, I need this written out. Limit as n goes infinity, the absolute value of n plus 1 over 1 plus n plus 1 squared. And you can write this out. It's going to be n squared plus 2n plus 2, if you simplify all that, divided by the nth term. Now, there's I, I can't really uh, simplify anything here, but when I take the limit, those two kind of grow together and go to one. These two, their dominant terms grow together and go to one, and we get one, which is inconclusive. Okay? Uh, which is neither good or bad at this point. It might diverge. It might converge. Don't know. So next thing you try is integral test. As now integral test isn't going to work if it's not positive, if it's not decreasing, if it's not continuous, or if it results in something that you can't integrate, which is possible. So uh, we try integral test. Um, try and see how I can. This lighting is kind of bad. All right, trying to make it better. I just picked the wrong time of day, I guess, to do this. Now, this would be u substitution, u equals 1 plus x squared. It's not inverse tangent because it has an x on the top. So you're going to get 1 half du over u. So it's 1 half natural log the absolute value of u. So it's 1 half natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x squared. And you're going to go 1 to infinity. And when you do that, you're going to get one half natural log of infinity, which goes to infinity minus one half natural log of two. But that that blows up to infinity. That diverges on your test tomorrow. You have way more room. So I'm going to or uh, I'm going to want you guys to show your work um, better. Um, okay, so. If that diverges, then ours diverges by the integral test. I'm gonna skip number 12. That's harmonic series, by the way. So if you see something as simple as a harmonic series, you could say, hey, that's a harmonic series and it diverges. I just know that. Um, number four, let's see how I can try to make this lighting situation work better. All right, so nth term test goes to zero because uh, exponentials go uh, faster than polynomials. <clears throat> so it passes the nth term test. I'm not even going to write it down. Um, it's not a P series. It's not a geometric series. It's not an altering series. We could try the ratio test. Um, ratio test limit. Let me see if I can move my paper. <clears throat> Yeah, that's not great either. Oh, eh, it's a little better. Okay, I'll try that. Uh, limit as n goes to infinity, absolute values. You got to have the absolute values. n plus 1, n parentheses squared, uh, over 2 to the n plus 1, divided by the nth term, n squared. And uh, can, we, can we simplify that at all? Rules of exponents, that's going to be a 2 to the first. Um, you could rewrite this limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. Um, if you want, you could do the n plus 1 over n squared times 1 over 2. And that's going to go to 1. And so we get 1 half, which is less than 1, which means it converges. And you got to show me that. you got to show me that it's less than 1, that that's the reason you decided it converges. So, hey, ratio test worked. Now, we could try other tests. 
uh, you know, uh, do you think integral tests work? I don't think so. We, have, I don't think we're gonna be able to integrate that. I mean, you could try uh, integration by parts, but that sounds like a lot of work. So I think that's our best bet right there is ratio test. Uh, number 14. Um, now, ooh, I see right now, nth term test shows that this is gonna be bad. So this is the one that's worth writing nth term test for because this is gonna be your best, quickest way of showing it diverges. Limit as n goes to infinity. I'm looking at that, I'm like, oh, that top, it's gonna go faster than the bottom. So yeah, it goes to infinity over infinity in determinate form. You could use L'Hopital's rule if you want. Um, it wouldn't be too hard, but I'm fine with being like, that grows faster than that. This goes to pause infinity, which isn't, e you got it right, it doesn't equal zero. It's not because it goes to infinity specifically, it's because it doesn't equal zero. Because even if it went to a nice number, other than zero, it diverges. So that's, that's the criteria, is that it doesn't equal zero. So you gotta show that in your work. So that's, that's the best way to do that problem. I mean, you could, you could, we could try some others. It's not a geometric series. It's not a P series. It's not an alternate series. We could try ratio test. Let's just try it. I think your best bet to practicing for this test is to see if you recognize the fastest way and try it, but also just try the other ways, you know, because sometimes you're not going to see the best way. And this is going to make you really good at all of them. So it's gonna be two to the n plus one over n plus two divided by n plus one over two to the n. Rules of exponents say you're gonna get a two. These are gonna to go to one, so you're gonna get two, which is bigger than one, which diverges. So that wasn't that bad. Uh, ratio test. Now, I don't think we're gonna be able to integrate that. So integral test is probably out. Uh, 15 uh, nth term test. I mean, you could try, you could, you know, I don't think this one is, is as obvious as the other ones as far as nth term test, but um, I think it's going to work. Now, what I would probably do for any test is rewrite this. So a lot of times, maybe simplifying what you have uh, is, is going to be good. So, uh, negative two thirds to the n power as you go to infinity, it actually does go to zero because uh, negative two thirds times negative two thirds times negative two thirds. First of all, it's alternating, but secondly, the, the terms are getting smaller because you're multiplying by a fraction of a whole. And so you're gonna get less of, you know, a smaller fraction of a smaller fraction of a smaller fraction. So it passes the nth term test, which is inconclusive and so, but it's an alternating series. That's your best bet. You should be, oh, this is an alternating series. So let's do the alternating series test. You gotta name it. You gotta know what the test is. The test is the limit as n goes to infinity of the term. And if it goes to zero, that means it converges. You might, oh, you just said equals zero and that was inconclusive. Yeah, that was the nth term test. Now, once I recognize that it's an alternating series and I specifically show that in my work, then that makes sense. So alternating series, if the terms go to zero and the terms are going plus minus plus minus, then it's gonna converge for sure. You could try other ways. You could try, you know, by the way, this is a geometric series. So this is one that you would be expected to give me the sum of, even if you're like, oh, alternating series, but you need to know this is actually an, a geometric series. And the absolute value of R, which is the absolute value of negative two thirds, which is positive two thirds is less than one. So you could use that to say it converges, um, but you need to find the sum. The sum is A over one minus R the first term is, be careful, you gotta plug one into that, so it's gonna be negative two thirds over one minus r, which is negative two thirds. Be careful when you subtract the negative. So it's gonna be negative two thirds, it's gonna be plus plus, least common denominator is gonna be three, so that's five, five thirds, three fifths, the sum is negative two fifths. So this is the other, Thing that you'll need to provide tomorrow. 
Um, just for fun, we could try the ratio test and see. Now, all these tests should agree with each other. I mean, sometimes they're inconclusive. That's not disagreeing, but you shouldn't get one that says it converges and another one says that it diverges. So let's just see. Let's try it out. Limit as n goes to infinity. Absolute value of the negative 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 divided by the previous nth term. And rules of exponents say you're going to get a negative 2. Rules of exponents say you're going to get a 3. Absolute value is 2 thirds, which is less than 1, which converges. Um, integral test doesn't make sense on this one because integral test says it has to be positive everywhere. This one has negatives and positives, so it's like going back and forth. And that doesn't make sense to, uh, to match this with an improper integral. You could force it to all be positive and try that one, which I think would actually work, but you would have to integrate an exponential with out of base e, which is a little less common. So I think we could pull it off. We could show that it converges absolutely because if, if uh, R was positive two thirds, wouldn't that converge still uh, by the geometric series test? Yeah. Um, so I think you could force it to be positive and integrate that one as an improper integral and it would show it converges um, and therefore it would converge by the inter integral test. It would converge absolutely. Okay. Uh, Number six, um, now I think when I'm looking at this nth term test, what grows faster, exponentials or factorials? Factorials, it passes the nth term test. I'm not even gonna write it. I mean, you could write it if you want, um, but it's not a power, it's not a geometric series, it's not alternating, it's not P. So we could try ratio test. You're not gonna do integral tests on that because the last time I checked, we haven't integrated factorials before. So it's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Absolute values divided by the nth term. And rules of exponents would give you a 2. And then you guys should know how to simplify factorials with other factorials. n plus 1 factorial is the same as n plus 1 times n factorial. And so what we get just by simplifying, I haven't taken the limit yet. It might be worth it to just rewrite it. This is what you get. And that goes to zero, which is less than one. It doesn't have to go to zero to converge, but if it's less than one, it converges by the ratio test. So there you go. That was a bunch of number series. So it's about half your test, okay? And the other half of the test, it's going to be power series. So um, there's some more notes on the back. So this this pretest, I've kind of given you guys a bunch of like notes in it, which I don't usually do. But uh, so um, there's some notes about absolute convergence um, and and then power series. So um, now the one test I don't that I haven't really talked about for number series is a comparison test, and that's a possibility that I don't know I might give you one. But we've on recent assignments I've shown you guys a bunch of examples, so check out those problems from recent assignments. Um, so here's an example worked out um, for you, and. Uh, and then and then we have some some problems to try. So let's try some of those. So with power series, it's not a black or white question of converge or diverge. It's uh, it's usually where does it converge and where does it diverge. So um, what we generally jump to is the ratio test. And we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. And the ratio test comes from the next term should always be smaller than the previous term as you go to infinity. So the next term is n plus 1. 
and and if the next term is smaller than the previous term, if you divide the next term by the previous term, um, it should be less than one because the numerator should be uh, smaller than the denominator. So got to set it up. You got to show me all that. Got to limit absolute values. Um, let's try and simplify it. There's an X there. There's a three there. Now these guys, they go to one. And so we get, um, we get uh, absolute value of X over three. And when you take the limit, and then we've got to force it to be less than one to know where it converges. So we get an absolute value inequality. Um, you could rewrite it, you know, nicer like this. If you can get the coefficient of your X term in here to one, then this is usually your radius of convergence. Once you get it with a coefficient of one in front, radius of convergence, which could be a question, which is just something that you find along the way to find an interval of convergence. And then, so then we get negative three to three. Now, if that's all you do, you're going to lose tons of points on every single one of these problems, because what you need to do is you've only found the conclusive part. The inconclusive part is when this equals one, which is on the endpoints. That's when it equals one and, it, and they might converge or they might diverge. Uh, you got to test each one separately on every single one of these problems. You got to show the work. You got to show the, the, the number series tests because what happens is, so you should probably write Again, you're gonna have way more room on your test. Write down that you're doing endpoints. Write down the endpoint you're testing. Make it super clear. I'm just telling you, I'm gonna really complain about some people not being very clear about this. And even if they test them, I'm gonna take off points just because their work is just not good enough. So we plug that back into the original. Now, I you could show more work if you want, but this is gonna be negative three to the n over three to the n, which is gonna give you negative one to the n over uh, n to the one half. Now, um, what stands out to me is that this is an alternating series, and I know it's going to pass the alternating series test. So you could say alternating series test, uh, and you could say, well, the limit as n goes to infinity of negative one to the uh, n over n to the one half equals zero and it converges. So that endpoint converges. We've got to test the other one. They're not going to do the same thing. Um, they often result in similar expressions, but uh, n equals one. Now if we plug three in there, it's just going to be one to the n, which is just one over n to the one half. And what I think of right away on this one is that's a P series. And it's a P series with P equal to one half, which is smaller than or equal to one diverges. It has to be bigger than one to converge. So we're going to include negative three, but not positive three. We could also write this as an interval notation. You should be comfortable with either one of those. So that's how we do power series. Ratio test, find the interval convergence, test both endpoints. Every time they're gonna be number series, you use the same. You're gonna be doing the work from the other half of the test again and again and again on this part of the test too, as just a smaller part of it. Uh, 19, uh, so we, this is a power series. It has X in it, ratio test. Uh, limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x to the, now we're going to plug 2n plus 1 in there, and the 2 gets multiplied to the to the 1, so it's going to be 2n plus 3 over n plus 1 factorial. It has to be in parentheses. If you don't understand how I got the 2n plus 3, which matters, it's going to affect our answer. Just you got to plug n plus 1 in there. You could do it in parentheses, show more work, I guess. Um, divided by the previous term, multiplied by the reciprocal. And if we simplify this, it's going to be n plus 1 times n factorial, and the factorials will cancel. And here, uh, rules of exponents are going to leave you with x squared, 
So um, what we get is we get the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x squared over n plus 1. And we take the limit as n goes to infinity. Now, we're not plugging infinity into x, just an n, which means x is just going to be some number. We just don't know what it is yet. Some number divided by infinity is 0, which is then supposed to be compared to 1. And usually we get an interval of convergence, but this is just always true. This, this converges for all x values. For all x values. So what's the interval of convergence? Negative infinity to positive infinity. What's the radius of convergence? Uh, I guess we could say infinity, even though radius is supposed to be sort of like a measurement. So it's probably not totally appropriate. That's an interesting case. That's an extreme case. We can get a power series that converges for all reals. So I, we were looking at power series last chapter, sine, cosine, E. They converge for all reals. Um, we also can get a power series that never converges. That is possible. Um, so there are some special cases that we could run into. Um, all right, 21. Now, 21 is written in open form. So maybe the first thing to do is try and get the closed form of it. I just find that to be easier to work with for, with all these tests. So it's x to the first of 1. Now it's alternating. You guys see the alternating part? And... So if we say n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, which I find helpful if it's not totally obvious. And we're going to write it as n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n over n. So there it is. Um, oh, we forgot the alternating part. Negative 1. Usually the alternate part we just do separately. I usually put it in front, but negative one to the n, and you got to make sure the first term comes out positive. So this could be n plus one or n minus one because um, the first term is positive. So you need that. Now with um, with that, uh, now we could we could do the uh, the ratio test limit as n goes to infinity, the absolute value of negative 1 n plus 2 x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times n over negative 1 to the n plus 1 x to the n. Uh, rules of exponents, you get an x, uh, you get a negative 1. These are going to go to 1. So we get absolute value of negative x is less than 1. Now, we could also write that a little more simply as the absolute value of x is less than 1 because the absolute value it, you know, of, of negative 3 is the same as the absolute value of positive 3. So let's just make it positive, just to make it a little easier. So it's going to be negative 1 to 1. And now we have to, we have to check the endpoints. If you don't check the endpoints on every single one, now the, we didn't do the endpoints on 19 because it just converged no matter what. So we didn't have any inconclusive cases. When it equals one, it's inconclusive. The lighting is getting bad again. <laughs> Let's see. Can I move it up here? Is that better? No. It's super bright. Okay. I guess that kind of works. So maybe write in your work endpoints and tell me which one you're doing. I want it to be very clear. Uh, X equals one. Man. Let's see. Will it adjust? There you go. Okay. Figured it out. I gotta do this one handed now. Okay. So we say, all right, it um, becomes n equals one to infinity. If you plug negative one up here, um, I mean, we could just write it. Um, you usually wanna simplify it. So when you do that, you're gonna get. Um, you're going to get negative 1 to the n 
uh, times negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the first. So I'm using rules of exponents to kind of break this up. This is going to be negative 1 to the 2n, which is the same thing as negative 1 squared. So really what this comes down to is it's just going to be a negative 1 over n. Now, that right there, if you take the negative out, which you're allowed to because it's just a constant, this is the harmonic series. So you could just be like, oh, uh, harmonic series uh, diverges. Um, you could do a lot of other things. You could do p-series test, p equals 1, diverges. You could do integral test because that's how we got p-series. This is just a really special p-series, and we just know it diverges. So negative 1 isn't going to be in the answer. Um, let's do positive 1. And when we do positive 1, and you plug in an x, 1 to the n is just 1. So you get negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. Now that's an alternating series. You could do alternating series test and it converges. You could say that this is the alternating harmonic uh, series, which is a very famous series. And we know that it, that it converges. Um, but it would be easy to do alternating series tests if you want. But that one converges. So we're going to use 1, but not negative 1. So we could also write it. Uh, in interval notation like that. So, um, every time, okay. Uh, I guess we try the next one. Uh, limit as n goes to infinity. This is the ratio test that we use to um, find the interval of convergence. So it's going to be 3 minus 2x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 divided by the nth term. And then we could try and, um, well, I mean, it's up to you. But uh, 3 minus 2x, well, rules of exponents, you get that left over. And then this is going to go to 1. So you're going to get absolute value of 3 minus 2x is less than 1. So that's your, that's your absolute value inequality that you got to solve now. Um, we've been, I, a trick I like to use is the ruler postulate, but it, it works better when you have, uh, the coefficient in front of the x as a 1. So then I say, okay, well, the middle of this is going to be at 3 halves, and then it's going to be 1 half either way, because this distance on number line is less than 1 half. So we're going to be within between these. And so then you're going to be at 2 halves, which is 1, and you're going to be at 4 halves, which is 2. Those are your, the endpoints. So now you got to test the endpoints. Um, I'm kind of running out of room here. Maybe I'll just use this room and I'll do this problem on another sheet of paper. So, because this was all work from the last problem. So I'm just going to do the work here and then I'll probably just do the last two problems on a separate sheet of paper. Um, let's see if I can figure this out. Camera adjust. Okay. I still want to see the last problem. I'm still working on twenty two. Okay, so we gotta do endpoints on your test, you're gonna have way more room. So we're gonna do x equals one. You gotta identify it, um, write the number series, uh, plug one in, so it's gonna be three minus two is one, one to the n is one, and this is what you get. And I'd be like, oh, that's a harmonic series, it diverges. Or you could do p 
P series tests. Sure, P equals one, which is equal to one, which diverges. You could do integral tests, but that one's gonna diverge. Now X equals, it's interesting. Sometimes one endpoint gives you an alternating series and the other one doesn't. The alternating series generally converges a lot easier than non-alternating. So if we put two in um, and we do N equals one to infinity and we plug two in, it's gonna be three minus four, which is negative one to the N power. And that's the alternating series test or alternate, it's the alternating harmonic series specifically and it converges uh, or you could do the alternating series test and it converges. So two is gonna work, two is gonna be a solid circle and one is gonna stay an open circle. And so when we write it, we could write one X is between one and two, including two, or we could write it as a uh, interval notation. You got to do the endpoints. Uh, some people are going to lose a bunch of points on the test because they're just not going to test endpoints. Some people are going to do it. They're only going to test one. They're going to test both. They're just not going to be very clear in the work. So I'm going to just take off points because I'm. I don't feel like they've communicated the work well enough. I mean, think for your response, for your response. You got to be very clear. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, 23 and 24 on a separate sheet of paper. I'm just running out of room. So <clears throat> let me get a sheet of paper right on. I guess I could pause my video, right? And then you wouldn't have to uh, wait for me to find stuff, but then then we couldn't have a random conversation right now about it. So what what's the fun in that? Okay, um, now, uh, I think I made a, I don't know if my solutions online have a mistake on problem 24. I, I've written something down right here. I guess I could check later. But um, so 23. Trying to zoom out. Okay. 23 is, I'm just going to rewrite the problem down, um, n equals 0 to infinity uh, x to the n over n plus 2 uh, factorial. Um, okay, let's jump into ratio test. So we usually just do ratio test right away with power series. Limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 3. 3 factorial times n plus 2 factorial over x to the n. And we can definitely reduce this a lot. There's going to be an x to the first. This is going to be n plus 3 times n plus 2 factorial so that I can get rid of the n plus 2 factorial. And so if I rewrite this, just to make it more clear, I haven't taken the limit yet. It's going to be absolute value of x over n plus 3. The absolute values almost never go away when you're doing this, even after you take the limit. Um, now, in this case right here, n is going to infinity. X, don't, it's not infinity or infinity. This is not 1. This is not indeterminate form. It's n going to infinity. X is not going to infinity. X is just some constant. So this is going to go to 0, which is less than 1. you got to show me that, which means it converges all the time. Converges for all x. So what's the interval of convergence? Negative infinity to positive infinity. There you go. Don't you like those ones? I mean, those ones, now you don't have to test endpoints because there are no endpoints. Ah, oh, I got to test infinity. No, you can't plug infinity in, right? So it just converges all the time. So that's cool. Um, and then... 24, I'll write the problem down. Okay. 
sun just went behind a cloud, so I'm safe right now. I don't know. Okay. All right. Let's take limit uh, ratio test. Limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 3 to the n plus 1 over x minus 2 to the n plus 1 divided by the nth term multiplied by the reciprocal. You guys should get be good at cranking that out. Okay. Um, and then... So we clean this up. There's an x minus two. Uh, there's a negative one. There's a three. So the ends actually go away. There's no ends. And so the answer is negative three over x minus two. Um, and we could split that up, All right? We're allowed to do that. And I mean, that should work. So that's three over the absolute value of x minus two, and it needs to be less than one. So we've got to write that. Okay, so now we've got to solve this absolute value inequality. And this one's kind of annoying because it has x's in the denominator. And sometimes I feel like I make this way too hard for myself in like, well, let's do this and that. And I try and use kind of some funky in a way of trying to solve it. But in my mind, I'm thinking, well, that means that the absolute value of x minus 2, for this to be less than 1, that means the denominator needs to be bigger than the numerator, which means this needs to be bigger than 3. Right? That's it. That's as simple as that. Now I got a nice regular linear absolute value inequality. You know, you could do the rule of postulate, 2 is the middle, go 3 away, go 3 away. Now be careful. I'll tell you in a second why. Um, you might be like, oh, the radius of convergence is three. No, I don't know if I'd say that. Uh, look at this. It's greater than three, which means it's more distances bigger than three on the absolute on the on the number line, right? You guys understand what absolute values mean, right? Distance on number line from a certain location. And this is saying the distance are bigger. Most of these problems is less than, so you get this in between region but now we're getting two outside regions so i don't really think radius of convergence is appropriate here but we're going to get two intervals of convergence which is fine but we still have two endpoints that we have to test so we still have to test the endpoint so you got to be very specific x equals negative one tell me the endpoint you're testing rewrite the power series into a number series so if you plug negative one in for x, you get negative 3 to the n over 3 to n. You're going to get negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n, which is negative 1 to the 2n, which is negative 1 squared to the n, which is just 1. Uh, guys, nth term test is my best bet here because the terms aren't going to zero. nth term test limit as n goes to infinity of 1 equals 1, which doesn't equal 0, which diverges. So negative 1 doesn't work. Let's try x equals 5. Let's rewrite it. Write down, which be very specific, x equals 5. We write the power series into a number series. Now, if x equals 5, you get 3, you get negative 1 to the n times 1. Okay, cool. That's an alternating series. I'm not going to use alternating series test because it doesn't pass the nth term test. Nth term test. Limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n is going to go to plus or minus 1. It doesn't go to infinity. It goes plus or minus 1. But it doesn't go to 0, which means it diverges. By the nth term test, you got to name the test. you got to tell me if conversion or diverges. you got to show me the criteria. you got to show me the work. So neither of them are going to be used. So your final answer is you could say x is less than negative 1 or 
x is greater than 5. It's an or. Um, or you could say negative infinity and negative 1. And then 5 to positive infinity. Interval notation. Let me show you guys that. So there you go. Uh, lots of good stuff. You might try and check out some of the problems I've done and some of the other assignments that involve a uh, comparison test. Um, if it's on the test, I'll probably only give it to you like once, you know, and then, you know, yeah. So, all right. Uh, I think that's long enough.